Hey fellas, me Trapper here, and welcome to another edition of Snare School. Now I finished up the Snare School series of videos a while back, but I felt the need to add one more episode on caveman snaring. Now caveman snaring is a style of uh, snaring where you carry only very minimal equipment. What you're going to need is three things. You're going to need some wire, 14 gauge wire, you're going to need a pair of pliers, and of course you're going to need the snare itself. That's it. The idea is you're not carrying any um, pre-made snare supports. You're not carrying uh, anything extra. Uh, you're just walking through the woods with a coil of wire, fistful of snares, and a pair of pliers. Let me show you how this works. I don't know if this is going to show up very well on video. I'm going to clean this out, but we got a game trail running through the woods right through here. And I'm going to use these two trees as my anchor point and my tie-off. Now, the important concept to remember is that we need two points of contact to properly stabilize our snare. Let me go ahead and clean this out a little bit and uh, so it'll show up a little bit better. And then we're going to do it step by step. Okay, we've got our coil of 14-gauge wire. Got our snare and our pliers. I'm going to hang the snare in this game trail, and I'm going to use these two trees as my two points of contact. The first thing I want to do is cut my wire. Now, I'm going to measure this out from this tree out to here, and then I want to cut about three times this distance because I have to wrap it around these trees and have enough left to support my snare. The single most common mistake that people make is cutting their support wire too short. If you cut it too short, you end up not with not enough wire and it's no good. If you cut it too long, you can always trim it. So I'm gonna cut my wire and show you how to do this. All right, so I've got my support wire cut. Now, I'm also gonna use my support wire to anchor my snare to this tree. So let's go ahead and do this. Now what I'm going to do is just twist this by hand. Notice that I'm not trying to get it super tight. I'm just twisting it up. Okay, see how that'll move? Now, I'm going to set my height where I want it here. This is where I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to put it under tension. So I start making my wraps here. Getting that good and tight. One more. There. Now you can see I've got plenty of wire to work with. Now what I want is about right here. I'm going to cut this. Now, to support my snare, I'm going to come back about four inches or so. I'm going to bend the wire vertically. Then I'm going to bend it back down and back up. What I'm going to end up with is sort of uh, an inverted S. Now, let's open the snare up. There we go. And you can see how that provides tension and this wire allows me to hang that snare wherever I want. Now bonus little trick, if you've got an animal that may duck under, just give him a little uh, incentive to lift his chin up a little bit. There you go. Let's take a closer look. 
That's tree number one. The base of my support wire also anchors the snare. And you use I like I like to use those barrel swivels. Comes to tree number two. That's where I make multiple wraps and get it good and firm. That's what makes the wire stable. I've got my reverse S bend on it. And you can see how I thread the cable through there. And that supports the loop. And then I've got my chin ups hanging from the bottom of the loop. Now, it's very quick, very simple, very cheap. One of the things that I like about this setup on land snaring is that if you have an animal that comes through that makes an incorrect pass or you have the snare too high or too low, you can see if something hits that, it's going to self-reset. See, that didn't put your set out of operation. Something hits it, it's coming right back where it's supposed to be. It's not until something actually gets its head in and pulls is that snare going to fire. So you can see, caveman snaring is very simple. Uh, you're going to need 14 gauge wire, lots of it. You'll need a pair of uh, pliers that you can cut the wire with and bend the wire to the shape that you need. And you're going to need your snare. That's pretty much it. Um, not a whole lot to it. Just um, invest in a lot of wire. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. Check me out at meattrapper.com. Like me on Facebook. And uh, we'll see you later. If you like what you've just seen, please go to patreon.com slash meattrapper and become a supporter of this channel. If you do, you'll unlock bonus content such as over 80 episodes of Meat Trapper Radio, my podcast that's available nowhere else. You'll unlock my resistance trapping series, which is trapping from a militia or a wartime perspective. You'll unlock bonus video and articles and posts available nowhere else, and you'll get direct personal answers to any trapping questions you may have. Thank you, and I hope to see you there.